This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Paul Hansen. Thurley Ruxton by Philip Viral Miguel's. Chapter 19 Threats and Carriages. Gaylord called the following afternoon and met such a radiant welcome on the part of Alice Van Kirk as not even his largest assurance would have ventured to predict. Thoroughly, he did not see. At Alice's counsel, the princess had accepted an invitation to drive with Willie Stetson and his mother in the park. Willie was expected almost momentarily. Gaylord looked well. He was well and confident and determined, having happened to, upon added information since the ball concerning the favor and feverish regard in which Princess Thoroughly was held, especially by eager male admirers quite as well satisfied to interview alice alone as a sort of preliminary manoeuvre in his game the visitor readily followed her lavender nookery and agreed to drink a cup of tea i told you last night i hoped to call he said you see i have not delayed in proving my friendly intentions i'm so glad said alice graciously i can scarcely understand how it happened we never met before she knew his antecedents and the wealth and pedigree they had boasted for three generations oh i have been in new york but little he confessed especially during the last few years of course i have heard your name a great many times recently coupled with that of your beautiful protege Alice mentally acknowledged the promptness with which he swung about to the subject uppermost in his thoughts. "'Oh, one hears so many things in these days of wireless,' she laughed. "'It ought to be called the wireless age, or perhaps the regardless age would be more accurate.' Gaylord nodded in a quick, curt way, which Thurley would have recognized as a sign of impatience to achieve some object sought with the greatest possible expedition. Uh, "'I was very agreeably surprised,' he stated, "'to encounter Thurley again last night at the dance.' alice hardly less than thoroughly herself resented his tone of familiarity she arched her brows thoroughly miss ruxton he corrected slightly flushing she may not have told you uh, we are well old acquaintances alice had decided to reveal as little as circumstances might permit Oh, she was very tired last night when we returned. Gaylord narrowed his eyes. The matter in hand was one of business with him, and he meant to be sufficiently plain. I knew her very well, more than ordinarily well, in New Haven. Oh, Alice betrayed not the slightest emotion, and not a very pronounced interest. "'You can imagine my surprise and delight, my amusement, I might say,' he resumed, "'to learn of the extraordinary misidentification of Thurley, that all New York seems so agreed upon. Rich, isn't it?' Uh, "'You mean the outcome of her remarkable resemblance to—' "'The Princess Thurvinia business, certainly,' he supplied— it's a wonderful joke, a stupendous joke, that the swell set is playing on itself. Not that Thurley doesn't look the part and all that sort of thing. She's a wonderful little girl. No one knows it better than I. But uh, what would happen, I wonder, if the truth should happen to leak? <laughs> he laughed, and she thought his mirth distinctly disagreeable. "'You are aware, I hope,' she answered, "'that neither Miss Ruxton nor myself has ever contributed anything "'to what you term this uh, stupendous joke.' "'That's the beauty of it, the art,' he stated baldly. "'I recognize that at once. 
but wouldn't it uh, jar all upper crustum to wake up some morning to the facts <laughs> he laughed again adding not that it's likely they will his dwelling upon this possibility jarred upon alice sufficiently to rouse all her sense of distrust and dislike it sounded too much in the nature of a menace a father to his thought if not a pronouncement of his power she wished to sound him thoroughly uh, would it necessarily disturb our friends to lose one princess and discover another they might even rejoice to find she was not of the foreign nobility oh well, that part of it of course he admitted bluntly but they might discover she was once just a pretty girl in new haven tutoring and living a very humble life oh not that anything of the sort would make the slightest difference to any one like myself he hastened to add but to others would the joke be quite as palatable of course they may never find out mentally alice branded him a cad whom not even youth could excuse outwardly she was still all smiles and entertainment of what possible advantage could it be i wonder she said for any one who chanced to know all this to advertise the facts oh none whatever he assured her with alacrity it's just odd that i should be the only one to know it heightens my interest in the game doesn't it uh, i feel toward thoroughly as none of those johnnies could and she feels the same toward you he had the grace to flush a trifle in momentary confusion but if she did she may i not be permitted a little modesty as much as you like she answered heartily glad to know he had at least a speaking acquaintance with the word pardon my question it was probably unfair but prompted by my interest in you both we shall be good friends he answered confidently i naturally expect to see rather a lot of the little girl a clatter of hoofs as a cavalcade introduced itself through the window followed almost at once by silence then a footman appeared at the door and engaged the attention of his mistress she crossed to him at once mr stetson madam if you please announced the servant quietly shall i speak to miss thoroughly madam at once james she smiled back at gaylord you will excuse me just a moment and she hastened to the reception room where stetson was waiting as blushing and self-conscious as a girl oh oh here you are alice he said attempting to laugh away his nervousness <laughs> you see i i didn't know of course what carriage miss thoroughly might prefer so i brought them all brought them all echoed alice moving at once to the window and sweeping aside the flimsy traceries of lace in heaven's name willie stetson did you come to take the whole asylum for a drive it appeared very much as if he had there was a very cavalcade of vehicles out by the curb each with a man in attendance every known and unknown contrivance on wheels was represented carts drags hacks cabs landaus victorias phaetons an automobile everything save a baby perambulator and a wheelbarrow well <laughs> she might as well have a, her choice mightn't she inquired the embarrassed willie mother you see has no preference really she'd ride in anything i suggested uh, deuced clever little mother mother was seated in the farmost rig at the moment she was a harmless mindless little person immovably persuaded that the universe pivoted somewhere in willie's system i see said alice your plan is at least unique thoroughly having seen the arrival of willie's procession was already coming down when james was halfway to the floor above what is it she said as she entered the room oh mr stetson how do you do nicely thank you said willie once more blushing profusely 
actually jolly to see you again <laughs> i was just telling alice i brought everything around to give you something of a choice she says my plan is unique <laughs> i was hoping it might seem different not too beastly commonplace thoroughly came to the window and cast a glance up and down the imposing line i don't believe i quite understand she confessed we couldn't ride in the mall oh, why not asked willie if we like a you a you like i mean i thought we'd start in the one you prefer and the others could follow behind in case you'd like to change you know or anything like that oh my please send them away all but the one your mother's in said thoroughly that is your mother i suppose that's the mater all right but uh, send them away are, are you sure that's the one you prefer i mean if you'd like any of the other horses put to the carriage willie go take your drive like a rational being alice interrupted i never heard of anything like it in my life all right said willie cheerfully really it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference to mother or me he went out and like the dismemberment of a circus the vehicle started away round the corner and down the avenue with the most diverting variety of paces then willie mother and thoroughly disappeared the princess gaily but discreetly waving to alice still standing by the window dear girl she murmured to herself and returned to the nookery and gaylord he had risen upon her retreat from the room and beheld from the window the departure of thoroughly with her friends piqued by a realization that others besides himself were in daily attendance here at the royal palace he was thoroughly determined to pursue his advantage to the utmost regardless of alice van kirk oh, where were we alice asked him as she gave him one of her bright disarming smiles had we just about exhausted the subject he could think of nothing new to say as a matter of fact that would not be either mere repetition or something too much in the nature of a threat to be judicious our subject was thoroughly he answered attempting a smile of his own such a subject could scarcely be exhausted in an afternoon ah yes and your past relationship of something of that sort uh, was that not finished either gaylord was not entirely persuaded as to the full significance of her question he concluded to be on the safer side he drew back the corners of his mouth peculiarly it was not a very pleasant expression uh, the relation has never been finished he answered incisively it has really just begun it was a bold speech almost defiantly delivered alice accepted its challenge mentally with a certain zest that heightened her color oh well of course that after all is a matter for you and thoroughly alone she answered it was not your intention to enlist my services in your behalf naturally it was rather a blunt question one calculated to uncover his batteries so to speak he recognized its nature why no not precisely but uh, standing as you do somewhat as thoroughly as sponsor promoter friend you can see that the least i could do was to make the matter plain to you as soon as possible let you know everything about it the joker lay in his emphasis on the word everything as alice readily divined what he meant to convey was simply that he wished her to know without delay that his power was great and he meant to employ it to any required extent that he would not be blocked by herself her plans or even by thoroughly herself i'm very glad you came for this revealing chat she told him smiling as she rose from her chair it clears things wonderfully always to be perfectly frank he too rose aware the interview was ended her baffling inscrutability which he felt and a little comprehended annoyed him excessively 
her apparent candour and acquiescence veiled so much and left him so little with which to contend or struggle he had come prepared for open war if need be he found his heavy artillery useless but one thing more he did intend that alice should know he meant to see thoroughly often take her out publicly and exhibit to the world his particular favour in her sight now that i am back with considerable leisure he said i shall arrange quite a programme for the little girl i have seen her so little for the last few months that there is a good deal of time to make up i may come around in fact uh, i shall come around to-morrow uh, with my car unless of course you and thoroughly have some particular engagement his assumption of mastership in the situation all but took alice's breath it was almost admirable it aroused her ire and amusement together she thought she foresaw the means of his own undoing by its own weight and persistence why yes by all means come to-morrow she said it will be a great pleasure for us all he thanked her shook her proffered hand and was presently gone still wondering just what her manner signified and how far she would aid or oppose him End of chapter 19